I'm coming to you from Melbourne, um, also known as Nam, which is on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay my respects to their ancestors, past and present. Thank you also to the organizers of the seminar, the summit, sorry, and a special thanks for making it possible for me to present remotely. As much as I would love to be there with you in person in Barcelona, it's not possible this time. So two years ago at the first summit on new media ar archiving, I spoke about one of the projects I'm leading at the moment called Archiving Australian Media Arts Towards a Method and a National Collection. This is a three year media arts history and preservation project, which is funded by the Australian Research Council under its linkage projects funding scheme. And here is the blurb. <clears throat> the project is a collaboration between major cultural institutions that have accepted the archives of important local media arts organizations, Experimenta Media Arts, Deluxe Media Arts, and the Australian Network for Art and Technology, known as ANAT, plus existing media arts collections at the Griffith University Art Museum and the State Library of South Australia. The project aims are here. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about what has come out of the second aim, namely our use of emulation as a service to emulate artworks from our chosen case studies. I'm going to be talking about the nodes, the target collections and domains of collections and investigators in a new Australian emulation network, which we've just received national grants funding to set up. So very exciting and very new, hot off the press. Over the past two years, we have been stabilizing and emulating media artworks using emulation as a service. For those of you who don't know, the emulation as a service platform developed by computer scientists at Freiburg University packages up open source emulators to provide access to obsolete computer environments, the hardware, operating systems, etc., on which legacy software and other complex digital artifacts can be emulated and accessed by users in a web browser. We've been using it in Australia in two projects, the Media Arts one I've mentioned, and also its sister project called Play It Again, preserving Australian video game history of the 1990s. And it's proven to be a very valuable tool for rendering the complex digital artifacts we're working with, 1990s games and 1980s and 90s digital media art. As part of our research protocol, in the Media Arts Project, we've been interviewing artists and demonstrating their emulated artworks to them, and they're pretty impressed. Funding from the Sloan and Mellon Foundations to Yale University has enabled a networked version of the platform to be developed over the last few, few years called EASY, Emulation as a Service Infrastructure. EASY delivers a scalable emulation service. In the US, Many of you would know it links libraries with born digital collections into a decentralized network where they can not only emulate content in-house, but also share images of utility software and pre-configured legacy environments with other library nodes. For instance, if a manuscript in one library requires an environment of Word 7 running in Windows 95, an administrator can search for and download the environment someone else has already configured saving time and resources. <clears throat> Currently, we have Easy running in Google Australia Cloud. We are a participant in the US hosted node trial being run by the Software Preservation Network, but we found that lag times across the Pacific Ocean were too great for the service to be usable in Australia. The Google Australia Cloud installation is currently being used at ACME, the Australian Center for the Moving Image, and it enables visitors to play vintage games on their own devices when they connect to Acme's Wi-Fi. I've got a short two minute um, video demo of one of the media artworks being started up in Easy, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So this is um, John Collette's 30 Words for the City. And what we're looking at here is the Easy backend. So this is a web browser, essentially that um, administrators would uh, go in and use uh, to configure an environment, and then um, it plays the, the artifact. So in this case, it's booting up OS 9, and it takes about as long as it did back in the day. 
And then there's the disk in the virtual disk drive. Okay, so if you were um, seeing that as a researcher going into an archive to use it, you would not be seeing the um, easy interface around it. You would just be seeing the window that's playing the, the artwork and then be able to interact with it within that window. That is the emulation session. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea what I'm talking about if you're not familiar with um, the platform. Okay, <clears throat> whoops, keep going. Okay, so the opportunity here is that complex born digital artifacts are inaccessible currently without legacy environments to operate in. The Easy platform provides a way to build such legacy environments and share them with others in the network. Sharing of preserved software between libraries and archives as, as that's, that is um, defined in the Copyright Act in Australia is legal for research purposes under Australian law. And that is um, due to the research exception in section 113J. Few people though at the moment in universities or in GLAM institutions have the skills and the know-how to do this. There's a need for training. There's a need for um, people learning how to do this and getting comfortable with it and familiar. Um, Arnet, uh, which you can see their logo up the top right, stands for Australia's Academic and Research Network, have been a partner of ours on the Games Linkage Project, where we've been evaluating these and now EASY, and they're keen to offer EASY as a service to subscribers. So Arnet uh, runs the internet between universities in Australia and many cultural institutions, so they're quite a unique organisation. So I'm going to talk uh, now a little about uh, the participants. Um, we have uh, a whole lot of universities here on the slide and a whole lot of GLAM institutions and I've grouped them um, by uh, city on the right hand side so you can see the different um, locations. Um, in March 2021 I put together a consortium of university researchers and GLAM institutions and university archives and we applied for infrastructure funding to build an Australian net emulation network. And we heard just before Christmas that it, we had been um, successful with this. So we've been awarded 751,000 Australian dollars um, and partners are contributing uh, some cash to that as well. And then there's an in-kind budget. Uh, if somebody wants to ask about the money in q and I can explain how it works. Uh, we're fortunate to be working closely with key international partners notably uh, the US install installation of EASY uh, via the Software Preservation Network and Yale University, as well as um, some of the other nodes on the US EASY network, like Cornell, and OpenSLX, of course, in Germany, the support company for the emulation as a service platform. So this will be a major national facility for, with 15 nodes across six cities and states. In reality, it's gonna be more than that, because some partners um, have offices in each state. For instance, IATSIS is the Australian Institute for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies, um, and they are around the country. 
as our national archives who are not in the list because they're not part of our network. They will be running their own network though. So there will be some uh, sharing going on there. These are very different organizations, <clears throat> just to state the obvious, but they all have born digital assets that need emulation in order to be accessible. Um, and I suppose I, I really took the urging from, I think it was the Vancouver Declaration, very much to heart, uh, UNESCO's Memory of the World, um, Vancouver Declaration, some years back, to get people who don't usually talk to each other talking. So there's a common set of interests here that means that it makes sense to build a grand consortium, which is what we've done. So what the new project entails? Well, here's the blurb. Um, media arts are part of this project, but it's broader than media arts. We're also targeting design and architecture. We're gonna be building an easy network, likely on servers run by Arnet with overflow cloud provision. Specifically, we aim to stabilize at-risk media arts and similar born digital cultural artifacts, deliver access to born digital cultural and artistic artifacts to researchers over an easy network, and importantly, I think, de develop a community of practice for software preservation in Australia, building skill sets and confidence in preserving and emulating digital artifacts. The scope of our activities um, is going to include you know, procuring and building the network, purchasing equipment and getting it out um, and training people in how to make disk images. There are people are at very different stages across these different institutions. Some people are completely au fait with how to do this and other people are really at the beginning of their journey. So um, we're going to uh, be running a community of practice. Uh, setting that up and, uh, and you know, walking people through uh, how to do some of these things that they might not know how to do, as well as training in building legacy environments. Um, and we have a whole swag of different archives of utility software that we'll be having access to, including from the Australian Computer Museum Society, um, to image uh, a whole lot of utility software and get it into easy so that environments can be built and shared. Okay, to talk a little bit about um, the different domains across which uh, we're going to be um, stabilizing artifacts, they cover media arts, but also there's a strong emphasis on some important architecture and industrial design collections here in Australia. Games and apps are another domain, AR, VR, and some web and pre-web networking. And on the right there, I've pasted the list of investigators. Um, chief investigators are typically researchers at universities and partner investigators are coming from the other affiliated organisations. So down the bottom, for instance, uh, Dr. Barbara Lemon is coming from NASLA, the National and State Libraries of, now it's Australasia, um, which is really wonderful. We've got three um, member libraries participating uh, from Queensland, Western Australia and um, New South Wales, as well as um, an agreement to uh, access some titles from the National Library of Australia's software collection. So it's really bringing together a whole lot of the assets uh, that up to this point have been really um, not well joined up. And I think this is, a, um, this is something, this is the beginning of starting to join things up in a bit more of a cohesive way. Okay, <clears throat> so access to the above mentioned content, uh, the media arts, architecture, design, et cetera, content is gonna enable chief investigators and their teams to lead genuinely transformational research in born digital cultural histories across the domains. And it's important to note that there's not a one-to-one -one connection between collections, domains, and researchers. It is much messier than that. <laughs> it's perhaps more um, and And the, Project is definitely underpinning a conception of collections as distributed. Um, just as a distributed national collection of digital media arts archives is coming together in the media arts um, project that I started out um, telling you about. Um, it also makes sense to characterize other collections that we're gonna be dealing with in this way. And across a, a country the size of Australia, um, I think it's really the only way to start thinking about uh, born digital collections. <clears throat> so 
um, and accessing them. So rather than thinking about the star power of one well-endowed collection, the holdings of one organisation here provide context for others. Um, even the holdings of a small organisation can valuably add to larger collections, and we've seen that in the Media Arts Project. Finally, a decentralised network of organisations and collections is precisely what the Emulation as a Service infrastructure platform has been built to service. And we are hoping that in future, with proposed legislative amendments, it might be possible to also offer off-site access to emulated artefacts, and perhaps even in time outside of national boundaries. This would truly realise the promise of distributed collections and offer real access choices to researchers at a time when, you know, jumping on a plane to go to the archive on the other side of the world is becoming less and less possible. All right, to finish up, um, we're going to be building a technical and human network. That is our conception of infrastructure and it entails both. A community of practice is going to help build confidence, um, not just that uh, collecting organisations can um, offer their existing collections um, and make them available to researchers, but it is also going to build confidence, I think, um, in the now about born digital collecting going forward. There's been a reticence because people haven't um, known how they're going to make born digital content accessible. Access to content is, I think, going to really enable CIs, chief investigators, to lead research. It's pretty, pretty startling across these five domains. And this inf infrastructure, it's important to note, is about the future as much of, as the past. You know, when we were workshopping this proposal, uh, people were saying, you know, virtual reality works are becoming um, inaccessible or difficult to access within the space of a PhD, you know, across a three year time span, um, the software updates have uh, rendered um, work completed as little as three years ago, really, really difficult to access. So, you know, we need to future proof what we're doing now as much as being able to access uh, historic content from the past. And of course, you know, contemporary artifacts are not going to stop being digital. Um, we're, we're, we're still seeing so much coming out that um, is going to need appropriate computing environments to run in in the future. So I will end there. Thank you. I'm really happy to answer questions you may have now or later. Uh, so please reach out. There's my email and the full paper is in the proceedings. Thanks so much.